let's uh, continue our discussion of I, uh, sampling, in particular ideal sampling, and uh, I want to talk about a little bit more about the uh, signal reconstruction, or how we go from the ideally sampled signal back to the original signal reconstruction. Um, this will lead to an interesting uh, interpretation of the original signal uh, in the time domain. Um, so for our ideally sampled signal, which we called x over bar of t, and recall we get that by multiplying x of t by this impulse train with impulses spaced capital T apart, and we can rewrite that as this infinite summation of just the sample values of x um, spaced t, capital T apart, times these shifted impulses. And then we saw that uh, the, Fourier tr the corresponding Fourier transform of the ideally sampled signal is consist of a bunch of shifted replicas of the baseband spectrum and they're shifted by omega s uh, where omega s is 2 pi over t or in hertz f of s is 1 over t so f of s and omega s are known as the, the sampling frequency. So just as a, uh, um, a representative uh, picture here, if this is what the Fourier transform of x of t looks like, let's say it has a maximum frequency on omega of 2 pi times b, so b would be the maximum frequency and hertz, okay. then the Fourier transform of the ideally sampled signal, x bar of omega, so if we sample this, uh, I'll, I'll put amplitudes on here, let's say this has an amplitude of A, and then because of the 1 over, one over T factor, all of the replicas then would have amplitudes of A over T. So again, we get this baseband spectrum, that appears, but then we also get replicas that appear every at omega s, at 2 omega s, and then minus omega s, minus 2 omega s, so th these continue on um, uh, infinitely in, in both directions. Okay. And if you recall, we said that well, we can recover our original spectrum then just by multiplying x bar of omega by h of omega, where h of omega has the, the frequency response of a low-pass filter. In particular, h of omega is just t rect omega over 2 pi b. So this is going to filter out um, any of the uh, replicas that, it, that appear at frequencies above 2 pi b. Um, in the time domain, this multiplication becomes convolution. And so it says we can recover our original s signal by convolving x bar of t, our ideally sampled signal, with the impulse response of this low pass filter and the impulse response is the inverse Fourier transform of the frequency response and that's a sync function 2 pi b t okay so with this expression at the at the top for x of t here um, x bar of t uh, consisting of a weighted sum of impulses i can do that i can carry out that convolution coming up then with an expression for x of t in terms of its samples in the time domain. So 
So I have this summation and then um, the weights of the impulses are my sample values and then convolving the sink with the impulse I just get a bunch of shifted sinks uh, right this is pi over t times t minus multiples of capital T where I've used the fact that capital T is uh, 1 over 2b in, uh, um, in order to um, satisfy the Nyquist criteria. So what what that means, or interpreting this sum, it says that I have some continuous time signal x of t looks like this now I'm back in the time domain this is x of t and then I sample that every capital T seconds okay, so let me mark off those equal intervals here And then what that summation indicated, it's an infinite sum of sync functions. The amplitude of each sync is equal to the amplitude of my function at that instant in time. Okay. And these sinks actually all have the quality so that their first zero is at the adjacent sample instant. And so this thing would continue on like this okay. here. So this is, I'm just sketching in one sync function here for uh, the one sample value. The next one would actually have this height, and it's set up to go through zero. And then the next one would have the height at the next sample. And at the next sample, and then this just continues. Of course, my expression, I'm drawing the individual uh, shifted sinks here. But if you recall in the expression, we said x of t is the sum of all of these sinks. And since that, that was an equality, it says, you know, at these sample instances, only one sink contributes to the sum. But in between, I've got multiple uh, sink functions. And the sync function here at, uh, on both sides of that time instant, but also from uh, um, an infinite number of sinks, all contributing in such a way so that in between the sample instances, they add up to give me uh, x of t. So again, it seems a little strange um, uh, that we can um, recover x of t uh, at all all instances in time, in, between, in, in particular in between the sample instances, just from the sample values. Of course, uh, we have to have, meet the, the Nyquist um, uh, rate criterion that uh, our samples are uh, taken at a frequency that's uh, greater than twice the highest frequency that's present in X of t. The summation that was on the previous slide gives a, another representation for x of t in the in the time domain in, in terms in terms of um, the sample values.